I wanted to get carrots growing early, so I boiled a tablespoon of cornstarch into some water, mixing well to create a gel-like slurry. After it had boiled for some minutes, I took it off the heat and let it cool down, pouring it in a metal bowl. This was so I could safely mix my pre-germinated carrot seeds, suspending them in the gel. A few days prior, I had put carrot seeds in a saucer with a bit of water, letting them rest in a warm place, covered by a used, repurposed Ziploc bag. I had not used a piece of paper towel or napkin this time because I needed to be able to just wash off the germinated seeds into the gel without any paper fragments. I knew the seeds were ready once the first signs of white roots poking out could be seen. I folded the seeds into the room temperature cornstarch gel using a kitchen spatula. The purpose was to get the seeds suspended in the gel so they could be sewn outside with ease. I've been using this method growing carrots for some years now. It does take some prep work to do, but I believe it helps me get more even germination earlier. With the help of a funnel, I poured the seed gel into a recycled glue container that had been thoroughly washed. In my previous videos showing this method, I used a Ziploc bag as a sort of a pastry bag to pipe out the seeds into the ground. However, I've realized that using a container like this, or a ketchup or mustard squeezable bottle, gives me much more control when sowing the seeds. I always like to experiment with methods to maximize my garden growing season so I can produce more in less space. It just so happened that this time either it was too early or the weather was a bit late. And it's the official first day of spring, it's March 21st, and this is happening. But that's not gonna stop me. I usually have more sense than trying to grow things under a carpet of snow, but there was a bit of method to my madness this time. We had warmer weeks preceding this late season snowstorm. I was sure that it would be the appropriate time to sow carrots already and the soil had already warmed up from several warmer than average weeks. However, a freak late bout of cold weather threw a monkey wrench into my calculations. Indeed, all the snow would delay things a bit, but from analyzing the available weather information, I knew that the snow would melt in about a day and soil temperatures were not going to drop substantially, so I knew that I could sow these carrots now. I also had to sow them since they were starting to germinate already and would be past their prime if I waited even another day. Since I was sowing them under many cold frames, there was going to be a pocket of air preventing the soil from completely freezing over. Temperatures were forecast to rise above freezing immediately after the snow, which meant immediate melting, even during the night. You may be wondering why I use this complicated method to sprout my carrot seeds. Certainly, you can sow them directly and have success. The majority of people do. Also, in case you want to simply give them better spacing to prevent the need of thinning, you can use seed tape or even make your own with tissue paper, spacing the tiny seed evenly, or mix them with sand, broadcasting them using a salt shaker. But the reason why I use this method is because it not only spaces seeds farther apart, but because it delivers to the ground pre-sprouted seed, which should emerge and start growing one to two weeks sooner than dormant seed would. Carrot seeds take longer to germinate if not in ideal temperature and humidity conditions such as exterior conditions. I like to hasten the initial seedling stage in my garden to shorten the window of time when the soil is more exposed, allowing the rampant growth of weeds. Just a couple of days later, spring had returned and all that snow had simply vanished. As temperatures rose beyond the average, I had to deal with the opposite threat since the seeds were growing under glass, high temperatures drying out the soil. Greenhouses or cold frames work great when temperatures are low, but if daytime temperatures reach beyond 65 degrees Fahrenheit with full sun, you must be vigilant with sensitive plants that may be growing under glass. I made sure to keep the ground well watered. Nothing is as lethal to a fragile seedling than dry soil. If their tender roots dry out too much, there is no recovery. Having experienced more frequent weather extremes in the early spring has made gardening a bit more challenging lately, but with some ingenuity and a watchful eye, we can learn to cope. A couple of weeks later, the ground was covered with seedlings, but most of them were not carrot seeds. No, it was not a freak accident of nature. I did not fail miserably either, this time. 
Yes, the ground was carpeted by a sprouting garden weed, lamb's quarter. But this was by design. I happened to suppress weed pressure by using a weed. I intentionally let a lamb's quarter plant grow to full maturity, spreading thousands of seeds onto the ground each year to replenish its seed in the soil. Since it is such a delicious plant, I treat it as a desirable plant, using its tendency of quick sprouting early in the year as a tool. The carrot seeds still grow amongst it, but the fast-growing lamb's quarter prevents other less desirable weeds from taking hold. Coming up in the next block, I'll show you what I do with all this lamb's quarter right after this commercial. If you enjoy the videos and would like to support the channel, you can purchase an original painting or drawing in my Etsy shop, or become a patron in my Patreon. Growing weeds to suppress weeds is beyond just counterintuitive. It is sheer madness, but there is method to this it. This system here has worked really well. I love the fact that the lamb's quarter creates a carpet that shields other, other um, weeds from actually sprouting. And that doesn't seem to compete with the carrot. So I get a good harvest of lamb's quarter sprouts and microgreens and the carrot doesn't get competition for too long and when I'm thinning I'm actually harvesting or weeding and harvesting. Lamb's quarter I'm surprised that it's not just palatable but it's actually delicious and very nutritious so this is not a chore at all this is harvesting. Now I do make sure to take away the whole plant including the root because lamb's quarter is um, a very resilient plant and if you just cut it, it's going to continue growing. So you want to take it out and get a good harvest of nice young lamb's quarter and that's actually the time when it's best to eat them, when they're the most delicious, the most tender. The key is to harvest the lamb's quarter intensively so it doesn't get a foothold and end up strangling the carrots. Carrots are slow growers at first only hitting their growth spurt a bit later. In my experience, I feel that they can tolerate a bit of competition to begin with as long as space is cleared for them later on. I recognize that this system may work best in a small space. I don't think doing this in a large scale would work, because harvesting the lamb's quarter would not be efficient. But it is perfect if you happen to enjoy the taste of lamb's quarter. If for some reason you can't keep up with lamb's quarter by incorporating it into your recipes in early spring, you can just yank them out and drop them as green mulch to clear the space and aid in the growth of the carrots. I decided to make a soup with my harvest. I dropped about a cup of lentils into a pot with a few cups of water. You can use a vegetable stock if you like a more intense base flavor. I let the lentils cook while I prepare the additional ingredients. I mashed a couple cloves of garlic and added them to the boiling lentils. To flavor the soup, I added a bit of turmeric, fennel seeds, and ground cumin to the pot. Olhos, olhos da menina, refletindo a selva mãe, seiva escorre pelos veios seus rabiscos. Since I had some sweet potatoes that were a bit past their prime, I decided to add them into the soup. Waste not, munt not. I carefully peel the wrinkled skin, removing any discolored parts. I then cut them in cubes and added them to the lentils. I season with salt to taste and let the ingredients simmer until tender. I then washed the lamb's quarter and added it into the boiling soup for them to wilt and cook up. Because lamb's quarter is higher in oxalates, much like spinach, those who have kidney issues should eat them in moderation. Fully cooking them is also a good idea. Olhos, 
olhos da menina Refletindo a selva mãe Seiva escorre pelos veios Seus rabiscos Ouço os hinos desta terra Sonhos longe a ecoar To finish off the spring soup I turned off the heat and dropped in some raisins and pine nuts. You can add a bit of olive oil on the end if you like. This brightly colored soup makes for a great light meal or entree. Dança valsa da palavra vida Quando o sol raiar O sol raiar de renascer de renascer Canta sua poesia em oração This coming week I'll have the privilege of participating in Kevin Spiritus Epic Gardening Podcast. If you are interested in listening to it, please search for Epic Gardening wherever you get your podcasts.